So far, we've accounted for all of the product costs incurred to satisfy orders to Mifflin Brantley's five different customers. But that's not all that goes into how much each customer contributes to our operating income because they're going to cause us to incur customer level costs or period costs, which can't be inventory. To figure out how much each of our five customers is causing us to incur in customer level costs, we're going to do the same concept over and over and over again. We have four different activities, and for each activity, we're going to take the activity rate, how much cost is incurred per each unit of the driver, and then multiply that by the quantity of the driver that each customer is causing us to incur. So for order taking, for example, the rate is 260, and it's always the same. So we're gonna take that $260, and we're gonna multiply it by the quantity of the driver that customer is causing us to incur. And the driver that we have here is the number of orders. So if I take 260 and multiply it by the number of orders placed by each customer, I get how much we spent in order taking costs, the cost of paying our staff to draw up contracts, to print out, complete and print out purchase orders, etc. cetera. For five and 10, at a rate of $260 per order, and fulfilling 200 orders, that customer caused us to incur $52,000 in order taking customer level costs. For Harry Teachers, at $260 per order, and 240 orders in total, Harry Teachers caused Mifflin Brantley to incur $62,400 in order taking costs. For each customer, I want the number of orders to change to the respective amount that, that customer made, but this 260 in cell B7 is always going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go and make cell B7 absolute. And now I can fill handle, and when I do that, I figure out at a rate of $260 per order, the 400 orders that Bullseye placed caused us to incur $104,000 in order taking costs. The $280 that Jmart placed at a rate of 260 per order caused us to incur $72,800 worth of order taking costs. And the 190 orders that Colonel Parker's placed caused us to incur $49,400 worth of order taking costs. For product handling, the cost of paying our warehouse workers to load trucks and store things, etc., our rate is $26, and our driver is the number of cases sold. So for each case that we sold, our five respective customers, we're going to assume that it caused us to incur $26 per case in product handling costs. So my formula for this particular line is $26 times the number of cases sold. If I could type, that would be great. There we go. So for product handling, I'm going to take the 26. And again, it's not going to change. So we want that to be absolute. So I'm going to make that guy absolute by hitting function in F4. And then I'm going to multiply that first by 5 and 10's number of cases purchased, which was 30,000. And 30,000 cases at a rate of $26 per case means that sales to 5 and 10 caused Mifflin Brantley to incur $780,000 worth of product handling costs. And now I can fill handle and 20,000 cases at a rate of $26 per case caused us to incur $520,000 of product handling costs for sales to Harry Teachers. 50,000 cases at $26 a case caused us to incur $1.3 million in product handling costs to Bullseye. And from that same uh, mathematical property here, Jmart caused us to incur $936,000 in product handling costs. And Colonel Parker's caused us to incur $364,000 in product handling costs. For customer support, the rate is $5 per each case sold. So it's going to look just like the last one because we have the same driver. We just have a different activity rate. But if I take $5 and multiply it by the number of cases sold, I come up with a number that is how much each customer causes us to incur in follow-up costs for customer support. So that $5 doesn't want to change. We'll make him absolute. But I will multiply that by the number of cases that were purchased by each customer. Again, it was 30,000 for five and 10. So 30,000 cases at five bucks a piece means that customer causes us to incur $150,000 in customer support costs. For Harry Teachers, they ordered 20,000 cases, so at a rate of $5 per case ordered, 
we're going to assume they caused us to incur $100,000 in customer support costs. And I can fill handle all the way across here and see that the 50,000 cases that we sold the bullseye at a rate of $5 per case caused us to incur a quarter million dollars in customer support costs. The 36,000 cases we sold the Gmart at a rate of $5 per case caused us to incur $180,000 in customer support costs. And the 14,000 cases that we sold to Colonel Parker's assuming that we had a customer support cost uh, equal to $5 for each case sold is going to be $70,000 worth of customer support costs that we can attribute to that customer. And then lastly, we got delivery costs, which we've got two components, not just the number of deliveries we made, but also how far we had to travel to deliver to those customers. Our rate is $3 per mile. So we need to first figure out how many miles in total that we had to drive to deliver to these customers. Well, if I take the number of deliveries and I multiply that by the miles, miles per delivery, I would get the total amount of miles that we had to drive to make all of those deliveries combined. And if I multiply that by the $3 per mile activity rate that we have above, I'm gonna get the total amount of delivery costs that we incurred to deliver to each respective customer. So for five and 10, the number of deliveries we made to them was 200. Each delivery that we made to them made us drive 24 miles round trip. And if we are incurring a cost of $3 per mile that we drive, that means that in total, all of the miles we had to drive to send pond baboons to five and 10 caused our company to incur $14,400 worth of delivery costs. For Harry Teachers, the number of deliveries we made was 240. Harry Teachers round trip to their store location is 40 miles from our production facility. So I multiply those two numbers together, I get the total amount of miles that we had to drive to deliver to Harry Teachers. We'll multiply that by our activity rate and our activity rate's not going to change. So let me make that guy absolute. And we find out that it's going to cost us or did cost us $28,800 to deliver to Harry Teachers during the period. And now since I have the formula set up, I can fill handle 380 deliveries with each delivery causing us to drive 60 miles and each mile we drive causing us to incur $3 in cost means the deliveries to bullseye cost us a total of $68,400. And that same formula right here is going to tell us that we spent $100,800 delivering to Jmart and $43,200 in fuel costs and driver expenses and repairs and maintenance and oil changes and new wipers and whatever you want to have. We spent $43,200 delivering to Colonel Parker's. So our total customer level cost is just the sum equals the sum of the four numbers above. In total, between order taking, product handling, customer support, and delivery costs, we spent $996,400 taking care of orders to 5 and 10, which were for costs that we could not inventory, we could not place in our product. And I can fill handle this all the way across. And I get the respective total customer level cost for each of our different customers. Harry Teachers was 711200 Bullseye caused us to incur $1,722,400, which we could not inventory. Jmart was $1,289,600, and Colonel Parker's was $526,600. Well, what is our customer level operating income? That can be found by taking our gross margin, or our gross profit, and subtracting out any other costs that we had that we couldn't throw into our costs of goods sold or our total customer level costs. So we had a margin of 2.7 million from five and 10, but they also caused us to incur $996,400 worth of operating costs, if you will, which means their contribution to our overall operating income was 1,703,600. For Harry Teachers, we had $1,920,000 of gross margin, but that company caused us to incur an additional $711,200 of operating costs, which means their contribution to operating income was $1,208,800. And because I'm always just taking this cell and subtracting out this cell's amount to come up with our customer level operating income, 
When I fill handle without making anything absolute, it's going to give me all the numbers. $5 million gross margin from bullseye, less the $1,722,400 worth of non-inventoriable operating costs means that that particular customer's contribution to our operating income was $3,277,600. We see that Jmart had a contribution to our operating income of $3,030,400. And Colonel Parker's, who is our smallest customer by terms of units purchased from us, contributed $873,400 to our overall operating income. So are all these customers worth their weight? Like, should we continue to do business with each of these five respective customers? And as a rule of thumb, if your contribution to operating income from any one customer is negative, what is the point of continuing to do business with that customer? Doing so is causing you to lose money. Fortunately for Mifflin Brantley, all of these numbers are positive. So working with these customers is what we want to keep doing. Like uh, they're all increasing our company's overall income, but there's more things that you can look at here. And it says down here, briefly assess the firm's five primary customers and what changes can we make to increase operating income going forward? And this is kind of next level looking at the numbers. And one thing that stands out to me is Jmart here. Somehow with Jmart, we managed to turn $7.2 million of revenues at list into just over $3 million of operating income. It's like over 40%. That's a very huge margin for operating income percentage versus your revenues at list. No one else is even close to that. Uh, bullseye with $10 million of revenues at list, turned into just a little bit more operating income than Jmart did. Well, that's interesting. Um, the, we're doing way more business with them. I mean, they ordered an additional 14,000 cases during the period, but we ba barely did any more income. We made more profit off the 50,000 combined cases that we sold to Jmart and Colonel Parkers, these two numbers together, than we did off the 50,000 cases that we sold to Bullseye. So what caused this difference? And it's that number right there. Jmart was so much more profitable because they didn't take advantage of their discount. Is it possible that these customers would still continue to order with us for this particular product, our case of Pond Balloons, if we lowered the discount rate? Because if we did so, we would definitely be able to increase our revenues in actual, which would in turn increase our gross margin, which would in turn increase our customer level operating income. It's something to consider. Another thing that would concern me with that though, is what we're selling here. We are selling a goofy product. This is a novelty product. I mean, we're Mifflin Brantle novelties. We are selling aquarium kits with little tiny aquatic animals in them for people to put on their desks. Is there a sustained market for that over time? If there's not, and we cut our discount, we make this more expensive for our customers to buy, uh, are, are we going to be able to continue to sell these in the future? Like, are they just gonna be like, no, we'll find another novelty product because that's old news. That's like the Pokemon Go of desktop products. If people loved it once upon a time, they don't anymore. Uh, so maybe we do wanna keep our discount really really high in order to push all these products as much as we possibly can just so they're out in the hands of people and they're creating that customer demand by word of mouth for your write-up for this question it's not like there's a right or wrong unless somebody has a negative customer level operating income or somebody's margin is really really small versus their revenues at list it's more about thinking about how the numbers individually each component is affecting your overall operating income and is there a way that you can increase that income in the long run?